this week on Geek Builders, I restored a 1940s Krug office chair. My dad found an old Krug office chair from the 1940s and thought I'd like to restore it. I'd done several furniture restorations before, but I thought I'd film this one and share it on the channel. The chair looked like it was in pretty good shape, but it was kind of hard to tell what the wood looked like with all the leftover finish that was actually on the chair. And I thought the best way to start out by removing the finish would be to use a card scraper. Card scrapers are pretty efficient at removing the first couple layers of finish when looking at a furniture project without having to rely on chemical strippers, which I've done before, but I really don't like using. The card scraper makes pretty quick work of what's there in the chair and I start getting I can start getting a better look at what the grain actually looks like. The only problem is this is the only card scraper I have and it doesn't get into like a lot of the nooks and crannies that are needed to fully remove all of the the finish left on the chair. As well as trying to watch out for the damaged areas that are there on the chair, primarily on the railing and then at the center of the chair there's a large crack. Once I exhausted everything I could do with the card scraper I moved on to 220 grit sandpaper and sanded and sanded and sanded. This process took quite a while but because of the work I did on the card scraper the sandpaper didn't get gummed up quite as quick. Through the, from the advice I'd gotten from some friends on Facebook I decided not to try to remove all the areas that had been looked like they were worn and used to try to retain some of the character that's been developed over the last 60 years in the chair. And then after I had enough hand sanding, I went to the random over at sander, only to some areas where I knew I could clean up pretty quickly without causing any damage to the chair or changing the geometry or surface of the wood. Before getting to a point where I could apply any finish, I needed to take a look at the damaged areas of the chair and kind of fill those in. I decided to go with the wood filler, primarily because I found some wood filler that looked like it was the same color as the uh, natural color of the oak of the chair. Looking back on this now though, I wonder if epoxy might have worked a little bit better. The wood filler did work, but I'm not really too happy with the final result and it looks like it's a slight discoloration after I put the final finish on. I didn't get any footage of actually applying the filler. I ran out of memory on my camera. But here's how it looks after those areas have been filled in, especially along the back rail that had been damaged, probably just over time and wear and the wood possibly drying out. Once I had all the finish removed and sanded pretty smooth and to a point that I liked, I used a rag and some uh, solvent and wiped out all the dust. You can see the wood grain pattern kind of pops out a little bit more than it did in the original pictures. I decided to go with somewhat of an unorthodox finish for a chair. But here's a fun fact. I first learned about Brie Wax from Jimmy Duresta's TV show, Dirty Money. So a little bit of a shout out to uh, Mr. Duresta there. As I mentioned before, Brie Wax might be a little bit of an unorthodox finish for a piece of furniture that's gonna be handled quite a bit, primarily because the wax and the finish will wear off fairly quickly, but I wanted it to have this certain kind of sheen and satin feel after it's finished. If I need to put a different sort of sealing coat over that after, um, I have no issue doing that, but I really enjoy working with brig wax. It goes on pretty easily. You let the solvent kind of evaporate and kind of wipe it off. From looking at the bottom of the chair, you can see there's even some damage under the chair. I did some light sanding and I don't know, I might go back and seal that later, but I'm leaving it open for right now. The other primary concern with finishing the chair was taking a look at the legs that had some visible damage. I'm not sure if it was water damage or just general use. They weren't splitting yet, but I could see where they would split in a very short period of time if something wasn't done. So I decided to do something I haven't tried doing before. I decided that I was going to wrap the tip of each chair leg in brass. I found some sheets of brass that were about the size that I needed. and attempted to wrap them around the, each leg. I'd never worked with brass before, so I didn't know how it was gonna turn out and just considered it an experiment and a learning experience. Because it's so thin, it drills really easily and 
actually bends and wraps around the leg pretty easily too, but it wasn't without its own challenges since I'd never done this before. In fact, I actively decided to leave the nails that were holding the pieces uh, of brass on the legs not hammered in all the way. That way I got to actually take it off and remove it, which I did several times to bend it a little bit, um, a little bit more snugly around the leg and also to cut off the excess like I'm showing here. Luckily enough, the brass is thin enough to cut with a fairly strong pair of scissors. This was definitely a learning process and getting used to the springiness of the metal and how far I could bend it without distorting it or even causing a ripple in the metal, which I think happened only on one of the four legs. Each leg presented a slightly different challenge as well because they weren't solid, just uh, rectangles moving down. They're actually tapered at the ends and the back legs are tapered and they're curved. So there's a little bit of a challenge trying to wrap it around and getting the seam to meet up even in the back. I ended up cheating a little bit in the end on the top of the brass. They're wrapped around pretty snugly, but at the end there's it's open just a little bit more and I'll probably go back later and see how I can wrap those around. Maybe I can hammer it underneath um, at a later time. By the time I got to the last leg, I had a lot more confidence in what I was doing and was far better, better than I was doing the first leg. Once all the finish is dry and polished out and the legs are done, this is the finished product. Overall, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. Well, that's it for this episode. Please subscribe and follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Geek Builders. And please check out the other videos that I have available on the channel. And I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching Geek Builders and bring some geek into your life.